Hi everyone, it's Marcy Denning here from Stampin' with Marcy. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Canada and I want to welcome you to my Friday uh, Facebook Live. Thank you so much for joining me and taking a few moments out of your busy day to uh, join me for some crafting. Whether you're live, if you're live, you're gonna see that red button up at the top corner, or if you're watching the replay, um, thank you so much for uh, joining me. Uh, please say hello when you join me, let me know where you're coming from, and please do me a huge favor and share my video. It's how I reach more crafty friends, customers, and team members. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, please click that subscribe button below as well as that notification bell so that you don't miss any future uh, videos from me. Show me um, if you're enjoying my videos. Uh, give me a thumbs up, a heart, um, a comment. Um, Facebook and uh, YouTube really do like that and they help get my videos out there to more people. Okay, so I'm going to flip you around. Um, most of you are not used to me being live on Fridays anymore. Um, I usually post a video anymore because Fridays are very busy for me, but since I was not live on Wednesday, I was down with a migraine. I missed you guys, so I thought instead of doing a video, let's go live. So let's flip you around. Okay. It is a beautiful day here in southwestern Ontario. We had a couple crazy snow days. That was awful. Um, my beautiful um, Anne Magnolia did not like that one bit. Um, my beautiful um, blooms are all very browned and droopy and not happy thank goodness my yellow bird magnolia has not bloomed yet it's very early for my Anne magnolia at the front there that you would have seen that little bit of um the it's kind of like a uh, rich razzleberry color i would say those flowers um it usually does not bloom until mother's day weekend however with our unseasonably warm temperatures, I'm just moving all my lights here. We uh, were um, graced with early blooms. However, with our crazy, um, crazy uh, weather, they didn't last very long. Um, usually, like I said, it's Mother's Day that we get the beautiful showing and that's when my uh, children all three of them their um, high school graduation was always um, prom was uh, uh, Mother's Day weekend uh, around the 10th of May was Holy Cross's prom so we got photos of all three kids in front of that beautiful uh, tree however this year it's um, April that it's bloomed a whole lot earlier so okay I'm just adjusting everything um, making sure I'm in the right space hello Marie thanks for joining all right so how are we looking I think we're nice and bright although we could come up let me just bring you up just a smidge more because I want to show you my beautiful technique. Um, today we're going to be playing with Stampin' Blends and some, I call it rubbing alcohol. I grew up, it was called rubbing alcohol. Uh, the bottle says is, is propyl alcohol. So um, there, I think that's better. It's gonna give you a better view. So before we get started, some quick announcements. Hello, Carol, thanks for joining. Um, Stampin' Up! just announced this week that they are having a, a joining special May the 4th to the 31st. May the 4th be with you. Ha ha, I had to say it. So, their joining special. Oh my gosh, you guys. Um, as always, it's $135 Canadian that you pay. Um, 
But look at this, you get $206 worth of products that you get to choose. Free shipping always, free business supplies always, as well as a free previous paper pumpkin kit. Hello, Anne, like wowzers. That's $71 free extra products you get for your $135. So it is a perfect um, time to join. It's always a great time, but I'm one for a deal. And if you can hold off till May 4th, I've already told a couple gals, um, one gal who was planning on joining this week, I said, no, 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 I want you to get more for your money. Wait until May 4th to sign up. And she was very excited about it. Um, so that, let me just get this stuff out of the way. Batter up the um, May paper pumpkin kit. Sign up is going on right now to get uh, this fun baseball inspired kit. My boys, both Damon and Connor played um, baseball. First they played, they played four pitch, then they played fastball. Um, and Damon was a pitcher. Uh, for a few years so uh, I know that I will be able to get some uh, scrapbooking some more scrapbooking done for the boys with that kit all right I still have a uh, one spot left in my uh, paper share um, there's four people per share so my first share I have one spot left this was um, was on my blog last week it's um on it again today my blog post will go up later so it is a um, 120 pieces of six by six designer series paper out of these 10 different brand new packages as well as always a thank you gift for taking part and the cost is 52 dollars for local porch pickup and then you add um, 20 dollars priority post shipping to you Okay, Stampin' with Marcy's In Color Club. This is the perfect way to get your in colors. Oh my goodness, they are so gorgeous this year. Um, over five months, and you get to be uh, the host one of those months. It's $53 um, for the uh, each month. $20 priority post to get shipped to you. You get a a package of cardstock, a roll of ribbon, an ink pad, the ink refill, the stamp and write marker, and eight six by six DS pieces um, of paper um, in the color of your month, as well as a hand stamped card from me. And then don't forget, one of those months, um, you are going to gain the host rewards and get another uh, $21 free in product. All right, so today we are using products from the mini catalog as well as a couple items from the annual catalog that goes live on May the 4th. If you live in Canada and do not have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator that you currently work with and would like a catalog from me, please message me and I will get one in the mail to you. Um, or if you're local, porch pickup. All right, so this is the card we are going to be creating today. Is this not beautiful? I sure think so. Of course, you know me, I had to use pink. So um, I used, to create this, I've got my Light Melon Mambo, Dark Smoky Slate, because I love pink and gray together, and then my Light Bermuda Bay. Now, bring in all of my products that I used a lot of different products to create this card. So my sentiment is from always in my heart, this sentiment here, I was in need of an anniversary card. So um, I used the stamp set. However, it is available as a bundle with the dies in the um, mini catalog right now. All right, and then this die here, Oh, I think is so pretty. It is from the Dandy Wishes Dies. So let's just pull this out right now. And this is bundled together with the Garden Wishes stamp set in the mini January to June mini catalog. 
And finally, my label here is from the Pierced Bloom Dyes. There it is there. And that is available as a bundle with the In Bloom stamp set in the mini catalog. I love this die. Okay, I'm one for bundles. I love my bundles. So let's just set this aside for a moment. I already have my pieces cut um, and I've already heat embossed this because I didn't want to um, be noisy and take up extra time. So what you're gonna do is we've got a piece of vellum cardstock. I have seen this with um, my original that I saw was with the window sheets. And I saw this back last year, probably November, I think it was. Watched a video from a uh, Australian demonstrator. It could have been Claire Daly. I, that's who I said in my blog post, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm pretty sure it was Claire that I had seen the, um, the video from. And now a lot of people are doing it. So what you need to do, this is what I'm going to be cutting today. I have, this is just your um, chipboard um, that comes, it's kind of thick. It comes in your specialty designer series paper. So, and then as you can see, I've got washi tape here. So you want to make sure that your um, vellum is cut larger than your intended size and then you can just cut it down. So what you do is you take, now my washi tape, I find it um, doesn't stick down very well. You want it taped down to avoid the curling. So, um, but it dries fairly quickly, but like overnight is better, I think. But look at how it curls. But look at how pretty that is. So you wanna take it, um, make sure it's bigger than your intended card front size, as you can see, so that you can cut it down after the fact. So let's get rid of this. Hello, Sue, hello, Tammy. So we're gonna set this aside for a moment and we're gonna set this aside. We don't wanna get anything on that. So you're gonna take your, um, heavier um, chipboard and I've got some old washi tape here. Now if you had painter's tape that would work as well. So I am going to cover that. You want to tape it down so that it is secure. And like I said, it does lift. I can't seem to get it to not lift and curl. And I'm just catching the edge. The bigger uh, piece of vellum you would use or a window sheet, um, the um, more you'd be able to tape over. So let's just bring another piece there and another piece there. I don't know about you, but I have lots of this washi tape. Oh, I missed a spot there. I kind of went crooked. I can see some of the chipboard underneath. So there we go. So I'm gonna give this a press so that it is down really well. Now you need a high volume of alcohol. When I first tried it, um, I had on hand the normal, um, what was it, uh, 72 or 75 percent? This one here is 99. You need 90 percent or higher. And my sister Anne was the one that um, found it for me, Life Brand. That is Shoppers Drug Mart. I looked everywhere, and because of the pandemic, this was kind of hard to find at first. So um, she happened to be in Shoppers Drug Mart one day and found it and picked it up for me. and. Then I set it aside and forgot all about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, until recently when I was like, oh, I really want to get going with that. 
and try it. So you can use whatever colors you like. I personally am using these three. So I am going to just take my um, the brush tip end and you're gonna color in spots here and there going sideways on your um, blend so that you're not smooshing the nib part of that and we're just gonna fill it in so going right up the side but try not to go over top And whatever pattern you want, I mean, crafting, there are no steadfast rules, at least in my opinion, for this kind of stuff. You just do what you like, choose the colors you like, whatever. And come in with my Bermuda Bay. Carol, shoot, yours is only 50%. Yeah, 50% is not going to work. You need to have the really high amount. And let me tell you, you have to be so careful. Um, don't breathe it in. Um, it will start a coughing fit like you wouldn't believe. I mean, it is such a strong scent. Um, it's like, whoo, my goodness. So, and you're just, you know, whatever, whatever you want. Um, you just want to make sure that you are filling that area. I'm just kind of here and there. Um, and let's let's bring this line over more here all right and then so you're going to come back in and say all right i want to put some more gray in here attach those bring that down here um, in here you're just kind of scribbling in my opinion and every time you do this it's gonna look different because of um, your color choices, your pattern, all that stuff. So let's put a bit there, some here. Okay, so now let's come in with my pink and we're gonna fill in some more. So as you can see, I'm not, I'm just kind of filling it all in. I chose just to use three colors. Um, you could, you could use more if you wanted. It's whatever, whatever floats your boat, so to speak. So yeah. Let's just bring that, bring that. All right, so then. We need some more blue here. Now I did try using the um, darker of the Bermuda Bay and I just found it just a smidge too dark for what I wanted. So as you can see, we've now got it all covered. So I have this um, paint tray thing that palette I've had for a very long time. Um, don't know exactly where I got it. Don't remember. And I've got one of our water painters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pour 
a little, oh, and I'm pouring on the table. Go off here. I'm making a giant mess. I'm dripping, rubbing alcohol all over my floor. That's okay. So, whew. guys, this is so strong smelling. All right. So, what you're going to do, you want to keep, you can see that I've got, make sure I'm all in camera view here. I've got um, five of these paint pot, little pot things filled. So I'm gonna come in, and you want a different, um, let's just get <coughs> oy, some of this out of the way here. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna dip my um, brush in, and I'm gonna choose one of the colors, and I'm gonna start to just dab, dab, dab. I'm gonna keep going, and I'm just dabbing. All of, I'm doing the smoky slate first. Dabbing those colors in every section. You wanna work fairly quickly. And the more alcohol you use, the um, more saturated and diluted that color becomes. So we're just going around and you can see it's bleeding into the other colors and that is a-okay. All right, I've got all the gray. So I'm gonna come beside and just clean it off in one of the other empty, um, one of the other colors filled up um, alcohol. So now I'm gonna come in and I'm going to do my Bermuda Bay. And it is such a strong odor, oh my gosh. And you can see how it, the veining has already begun up there as it, the um, amount of alcohol I'm using. All right, so then I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna clean that off and then I'm gonna come in here to the next empty one just to get more, because I don't wanna contaminate my colors because you can see how um, much color is in there. All right, so now I'm gonna come in and do my Melon Mambo. And depending on which color you want to be the um, predominant as to how much you're gonna you know, apply of that color. And then that's looking pretty cool. You can see the Melon Mambo, it's such a strong color. So then I'm gonna rinse this off and clean it right away in my um, sink. I've got just a, a plastic straw. Breathe in, be not over top. Take your deep breath. And turn it a bit. You want to direct that um, ink to move. And look at how cool that is. You can take some paper towel to sop that up, but does that not look so cool? I sure think so. It's so much fun to play with. All right, so now I am going to get this out of my way. I'm just gonna move it right off my table to my other desk, my computer desk, so that I'm not um, making a mess with anything. And I, 
we'll remember to clean that afterwards. So um, I'm gonna set that aside. So here are some other ones. You can see how much it curled. And then this one here where there's more of the Bermuda Bay. This was the dark Bermuda Bay and the dark Melon Mambo and I thought it was just a little too intense for me. Whereas this with the light Bermuda Bay and the light Melon Mambo, I really liked that color effect. So you just play. Just start playing with the different um, Stampin' Blend markers to see what it is you like. So we're just gonna set that aside and move all of this out of the way. Oh, and something just fell. So now we are going to bring in our paper trimmer. And now this is gonna be kind of uh, tricky to cut, but you can see where I've had my tape on there. Hello, Cindy, hello, Marie, Monica, Mary. Um, yeah, so easy to make a really cool background. So um, I really do hope you guys get out your, whoop, I think I shifted that slightly. Uh, we'll do it afterwards. I'm just trimming down each of my sides so that I want all that white cut off that I uh, didn't. Hold on a second, my door is closed and the smell of alcohol there, whew. The smell of the alcohol is like overwhelming. So my card front here is going to be um, four inches by five and a quarter. So when it's all curled, it's very tricky. I mean, here in southwestern Ontario, we are very humid, our climate, so I don't know if that has any effect on the amount of curling um, or not. So, and then I am using um, white cardstock behind it. Um, so this is five and a quarter, so I'm bringing that to here. I wanted to show you step by step how I created this so that there's no mystery to it so you can easily do it yourself. Just remember a couple key points. Well ventilated area. You definitely need your high volume uh, alcohol. And um, when you're taking a breath to, if you're wanting to blow it around, um, when you're taking a breath before you use the straw, don't do it right over because I made that mistake and oh my goodness, the coughing fit because I inhaled those fumes. It was, it was awful. <laughs> so yes. All right. So you could, if you were to put this behind the Melon Mambo, you can see how it really makes, um, Tammy, I tried the spritzer and it, um, because it comes out as a mist, it didn't work um, to uh, move that. It, yeah, it just muddied it and, and it was fine droplets. That's why using your, um, if you've got an aqua paint or some kind of a paint brush, just to dip into your alcohol. So see how bright and that makes that pink really overpower. Um, let me grab the other colors that I have in here. So, if you were to, come on, try not to pull an entire sheet out. So my colors are Melon Mambo. Oh, this is Coastal Cabana, not Bermuda Bay, but you can see how it really pulls the color tone of that color blend that you used when you put that behind. So that's why I chose the, um, the white, where it made it, 
it really um, made it vibrant, all of the colors, and brought them more to life without one overpowering another. So, um, I need this now. Now, I found that um, my stamp and seal, I'm going to use it. And my basic white card stock is cut to the exact same size, uh, four by five and a quarter. So I am going to, oh, and I just, I just taped a Marshall hair in there. <laughs> we don't want cat hair to show through in that, now do we? So I'm just running all, if I can run a straight line here, I'm running my tape all around the outside. So that way, and I'm gooing it up at the same time. Goodness gracious. So, I have my Stampin' Seal on my base. So now I'm going to take my vellum and get over there. I'm going to, I'm going to have to bring this closer to me here. Line this up. Oh my goodness, it's sticking to my hand. There we go. And hopefully, am I getting it down straight? Oh, look at that. So, not too shabby. It's a little tricky because of the fact that it's got the, um, the curl to it. So it's a little tricky to get it to go down flat. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in... I know you can't get this, but if you've got any kind of little guillotine trimmer, I got a glue goober on the back there. See, I can see that there's that fine line there. So I am just going to line this up and snip that off. And then we're this side here, where I didn't quite, because I have it oh, had it over just slightly. So I'm okay with taking that little bit off. There. And you can see I'm holding this really close. You can't really see that stamp and seal on the back there. And so it gives it more um, substance to have on your card front. Um, and oh, doesn't that just look so brilliant and happy and vibrant on that white and then with that Mellon Mambo behind. I just love the way that looks. All right, so um, what I did next, oh, we're going to be using some Smoky Slate. This is some new textured ribbon. It has a bit of a shimmer to it. It's so pretty. Hi, Nancy. Um, thanks for joining. And then I'm also using, so this is in the new annual catalog, some Simply Elegant Trim. I'm using the silver. It um, We had trim like this years ago. It's thicker, so it's a little easier to use than the fine um, thread. Look at my finger because of the alcohol. It's like all, I don't know if this camera is going to pick it up. It's all white and dried. Yeah, um, rubbing alcohol is very drying to your hands. All right, so I'm going to take my liquid glue. And because it's got the vellum and it's um, really a strong desire to curl back up, I want to use extra um, glue 
on there to make sure that we are stuck down. All right. So we're going to adhere that. And then I'm gonna flip that over so I can really give it a good press. All right, so. Okay, next, let's bring in, before we go any further, the mini Stampin' Cut and Boss machine and my lovely die here. And let's crank that through. And here we have our beautiful, oh, did it not cut through all the way? Nope. Let's try that again without mucking that piece of cardstock up. Let's tape you in place so that you don't jump on me here. Okay. Now, did we cut through this time? Yes, we did. So, here we go. Carefully, because this is so fine. Pull that out. Now, I need my ribbon. What I did with it is I took and I taped it behind and I gave it a nice little angle cut on the side here. Not too severe, just a little bit. Just like that. And I before I decided where exactly, before I put my um, adhesive on the back, I kind of laid it out as to how, I keep telling you guys I'm very visual, so um, come on, it's sticking to my warm hands, so I Wanted to look and see whereabouts I wanted it to land. And then this is going to be like that. So I think that is good placement. So move that off, move that off. Keep a hold of that. And so I know that right here. So I stamp and seal. And before I put anything on the front, I'm going to stick this there and pull it around. And that's the great thing about working on the pierce mat or the um, silicone mat is because now I can come flip it over even though there's adhesive um, showing. And I can take a look and say, you know what, I think I've put you maybe a smidge too high. So let's take this off and move it down just a smidge and that's going to look good so i'm taking my stamp and seal again and i'm going to run a line right there so that my ribbon Lift that up to make sure it's straight. It's a little wonky, so lift you up. Put you back down, give it a little press. And there we have our um, ribbon there. But first let's take and fold and burnish our base. 
And this is thick basic white, four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half. All right. So now we're going to take our liquid glue and cover our back. And pop that on the card front. So I encourage you to pull out your favorite color combinations and give this a try. It just, oh, so fun, so pretty. So many different um, color variations. Um, I believe it was a Christmas card that I saw. So it was, was it variations of their, our different blues that she was using. So um, you could do blues, greens, pinks, whatever. Yeah, whatever strikes your fancy. So let's put this, I'm trying not to get the glue all over my hands. You want it down at the bottom and then give it a press. And I used very, very minimal glue on this, just a few dots are all you need. Hello, Beth from Minnesota. Thanks for joining. All right, so now my Fobo that I like to do, you guys know that. So um, I want it to go across this way. So I'm going to Take. Now this is very curly, so if you take your hands and kind of um, run it through, you can see how I'm straightening it out a bit. The heat and oil from my hands is going to help that um, crazy corkscrew effect calm down just slightly. So see now we've, we don't have that real corkscrew effect. So, all right. So now I'm going to my tail here and it's going to go up here. Get that out of my way so I don't knock it on the ground. I never cut my twine or anything ahead of time. I always like to make sure that I'm not wasting. I leave it on the spool. my stamp and seal is holding that in place and then before we trim it we're gonna take it flip it and I went the opposite way <laughs> so and I don't want it to go that way I want it to fill the other way so let's rip that off and do the opposite direction I do this every time it seems. All right, so you're just making a figure eight. There we go, and that loop is not quite big enough. So we need this a little bigger. Sorry, I am fiddly today. I hope you don't think I'm wasting your time and you're getting bored. I hope I'm keeping you engaged. Okay, let's see. That is better. So now we're just gonna take a snip and because this end here is frayed a bit from me pulling on it, I'm just going to snip that. 
snip that. And then we need some dimensionals. So, And I do like my dimensionals, as you know. And I'm gonna do one final thing, just to make sure that that stays in place. I'm going to take a mini glue dot, and I'm gonna just tuck that over top of it. Come on, get off my finger. So I'm pressing it down to the card stock so that way that is not going to um, pop off. So then come on, there we go. Get all my backings off. And bring this in. I want this slightly over top of my stem there. Lift up before I press down to make sure it is not wonky. Tighten that up. And there we have our beautiful card. Now you can see this is, it is drying, but I still want to give it more time to fully dry. I can still see there's just a bit of liquid there. I mean, rubbing alcohol does dry fairly quickly, but um, yeah, I'm gonna wanna give that more time to dry um, and get set type of thing before I pull it off. So, and I've left the inside empty um, so that I will fill it in with uh, my message later on, but Yes, isn't that just such a easy, easy, fun technique? Doesn't take much time. And this one here, what I did afterwards, you can see those little water droplets. I just took the, um, I just took my um, water painter and with a little bit of the um, alcohol on it, I tapped it over top and then the, um, wherever it, fell kind of left that little water droplet look. I didn't want to do it on the second one because I wanted to show by doing that or by leaving it. But um, very fun, very cool. I could have added some more bling here, but I wanted to really keep it where the um, star was the background and didn't have too awful much going on other than you know adding some ribbon and that so i hope you guys like that i hope that i have shown you how easy it is to do and that you will um be uh be uh, willing to give it a try carol likes the droplets marie loves this technique yeah i don't i kept putting it off, putting it off, um, doing it. And then I was like, you know what, just do it. <laughs> so I just started playing. And like I said, the more, more of one color or another color that you use, that's what the predominant color is going to be. So let me just flip you around. I'm gonna bring you back up. Jeannie, you really uh, enjoyed this technique. Well, thank you. I am glad. All right, so my desk in the back there. Um, yeah, it really not that difficult. Just some plan, uh, playing around. You got to get messy. Um, don't worry about getting messy. Let's flip you, there we go. Yeah, don't worry about getting messy, guys. I mean, the most beautiful um, products usually come from when you get really messy. You're, you're being creative, you're trying something new. Um, yeah, I am just 
I am thrilled with the way that this um, turned out. It's just gorgeous, I think. But uh, yeah, so pull out some of that old washi tape or if you've got some painter's tape, uh, pull out your Stampin' Blends. I mean, look at all the colors of Stampin' Blends I have behind me here. I have all of the colors as well as the fabulous new ones. So you know I'm gonna wanna be playing with them. So yeah. Um, Thank you, ladies. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a fabulous weekend. Um, I hope you get some time to craft, um, get some playtime in there. And uh, remember um, my In Color Club, my um, Paper Share. Um, I still have some spots available, so let me know if you're interested. And um, I will see you Monday morning at uh, 10 a.m. Um, this video with the blog post will be live um, at three o'clock, I believe I have it to publish so that I um, have time to get it to upload to YouTube. All right, have a great day and weekend. Bye for now.